Hey everyone, today we talk about something that sounds like it was pulled directly from a science fiction novel, but is apparently happening for real. A story about energy, power, and a massive technological leap forward that could change a whole lot about the world we live in. We are talking about a brand new type of nuclear reactor, one that was just switched on in China. And this isn't just another power plant, this is something fundamentally different. A machine that could solve some of the biggest problems that have planked nuclear energy for the last 70 years. The news, coming from outlets like CCTV and Xinhua News Agency, is that China has officially completed and is now operating what they call the TMSR LF1, a thorium-based molten salt reactor, a project spearheaded by the brilliant minds at the Shanghai Institute of Applied Physics. And before we get into the details, you need to know the two most incredible things about it right up front. First, they built this thing in the middle of the Gobi Desert in a city called Wuwei in the Gansu province, a place with almost no water. And second, its designers claim that it is physically incapable of having a meltdown like Chernobyl or Fukushima. Honestly, building a next-generation nuclear reactor in the Gobi Desert is the energy equivalent of opening a five-star sushi restaurant on the moon. It is so audaciously out of place, you can't help but be impressed. You go there expecting to find ancient Silk Road trading posts and maybe a very thirsty camel, not a device that operates at temperatures hot enough to reforge the one ring. So let's break down the central conflict that this new reactor is meant to solve. A problem that has been a huge strategic vulnerability for China and frankly for any country that wants to build a lot of nuclear power. For decades, the entire global nuclear industry has been built on one single element, uranium. And while it works, uranium has some serious drawbacks because it's relatively rare, it's expensive to process, and the global supply is controlled by just a handful of countries. Which means if you're a nation like China, trying to build dozens of new reactors to power your economy and move away from coal, you're constantly worried about where your next shipment of uranium fuel is coming from. As one report from CCTV put it, this dependency was like a massive shackle on the development of their nuclear ambitions, making them dependent on other nations for their energy security. And that is the first problem this new reactor completely obliterates because it doesn't run on uranium at all. It runs on an element called thorium. Now, here's the wild part. This isn't even a brand new idea, it's actually an American one. Back in the 1960s, scientists at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee built and successfully ran a molten salt reactor. But the program was eventually canceled. Now it seems China has picked up that decades-old research and sprinted past the finish line with it. Thorium is way, way more abundant on Earth than uranium. And here's the truly brilliant part from China's perspective. Their country has massive reserves of it. But the economic genius of this plan goes even deeper. Because most of China's thorium is a waste pipe product from their gigantic rare earth mining industry, which is an industry China already dominates globally. So for years, as they've been scooping up mountains of earth to get the minerals for our iPhones, they've been pulling up tons of this thorium and basically setting it aside as low-value industrial waste. And now, with this new reactor, they've essentially turned a pile of dirt into a source of nearly limitless clean energy. This is a level of recycling that should make us all feel deeply inadequate. I mean, we're all at home, carefully rinsing out our bean cans and feeling like Captain Planet. Meanwhile, China just looked at a giant mountain of industrial sludge left over from making our smartphones and said, you know what, I bet we can turn that into a literal star in a box. It's like discovering that the lint from your dryer can be converted into premium grade olive oil. It's not just resourceful, it is a cosmic middle finger to the very concept of garbage. Now that's the fuel problem solved. But what about the other massive conflict that has always haunted nuclear power? The issue of safety. We all have the images of Chernobyl and Fukushima burned into our minds, the frantic scramble to pump seawater on the melting cores, the dreaded hydrogen explosions. In both of those disasters, the core problem was a loss of cooling. Traditional nuclear reactors are basically just incredibly complicated ways to boil water. They use solid fuel rods to generate immense heat. 
And that heat is carried away by water under extreme pressure, which turns to steam and spins a turbine. But if the pumps fail, if the power goes out, if an earthquake severs the connection to the ocean, that water stops flowing and the reactor core gets hotter and hotter until it literally melts down. This new molten salt reactor throws that entire concept out the window. And this is where we get to the boldest claim of all. The Chinese are claiming they have built a reactor that cannot have a cooling failure meltdown. Here's how. Instead of using water as a coolant, it uses a special mixture of molten salt. And these salts are incredible because they stay liquid and stable at extremely high temperatures. In this reactor, the thorium fuel is actually dissolved directly into this molten salt. So the fuel and the coolant are one in the same liquid mixture. This hot radioactive salt mixture flows in a closed loop and the heat is naturally carried away from the core by simple convection. But here's the genius part. The reactor has a failsafe built into its very physics a freeze plug at the bottom, which is literally a plug of frozen salt that is kept solid by an external cooler. If all power is lost to the plant, that cooler stops working, the plug melts, and the entire liquid fuel salt mixture passively drains into underground storage tanks where it can spread out and cool down safely on its own. No human intervention, no computers, no emergency power needed. Think about that for a second. The ultimate safety feature on this thing is the nuclear equivalent of an ice pop. It's a frozen chunk of salt whose only job is to melt if things get weird, allowing the hot stuff to safely slide into a timeout corner. That's it. Its emergency plan was designed by gravity and basic thermodynamics, two things that have never once asked you to reset your router because they're having a bad day. It's beautifully, elegantly simple. And because it doesn't need a single drop of external water for cooling, it completely shatters the old rules about where you can build a nuclear plant. This is precisely why they could build this first-of-its-kind reactor on the windswept sandy plains of the Gobi Desert. Xinhua News Agency even called it a nuclear power miracle born in the desert. It means you could theoretically build these reactors anywhere you need power. So when you put it all together, the bold claim from China is that they have single-handedly leapfrogged the entire world in nuclear technology. Now, it is important to remember this is a very small 2 megawatt experimental reactor. It's a proof of concept. But the Chinese government is not stopping here. Their stated goal is to build a commercial scale 373 megawatt reactor by 2030, big enough to power hundreds of thousands of homes. They're claiming to have created a system that is inherently safer than anything that has come before, that runs on a cheap fuel they have a near monopoly on, and that can be deployed almost anywhere on Earth. And here's the real kicker. As I mentioned, America basically invented this technology in the 60s at Oak Ridge, looked at it, and then did the strategic equivalent of putting it in the national attic next to the space race trophies and a dusty box of Betamax tapes. Now, 50 years later, China has climbed into our attic, dusted it off, and turned it into the future of energy. It's like finding out your old high school garage band's demo tape was discovered by a producer in Sweden and is now the biggest pop act on the planet. You'd be happy for them, sure, but you'd also be kicking yourself so hard you might just break your own foot. <laughs>